Hello! In this video, I will be talking about the occupation and annexation of Hawaii that took place from 1893 to 1898, and some of the significant events that took place, starting with how Queen Liliuokalani was overthrown. In January of 1893, a group of U.S. sugar plantation owners and investors wanted to make more money from Hawaii sugar plantations. So they formed a group called the Committee of Safety. And this is going to be an important group to remember. Uh, this group was led by Sanford Dole. And he was also an important figure during this time. And together they staged a coup with the support of the American troops. And eventually, they would go on to take control and illegally abolish the Hawaiian monarchy. Going a little bit more into Sanford Dole. was born in Hawaii from American parents who were missionaries and he would go on to form the Committee of Safety. This was a group of 13 men who shared his same beliefs in that they supported the annexation of Hawaii and this group was also formerly known as the Annexation Club. And although I will be focusing on events taking place between 1893 and 1898, there, there are a lot of important details that took place before and after that time. So I will be explaining some of these key parts of what led up to this moment in history so we can have a better understanding of why these events took place. And one of these moments leading up to the occupation was the Bayonet, Bayonet Constitution. This took place in 1887. And this is when King David Kalakaua was coerced into signing a constitution that gave more rights to the settlers and and removed power from the Hawaiian monarchy. Over in America, after the Committee of Safety took charge, President Cleveland, who was skeptical of how the Committee of Safety gained control over, her, over Hawaii, wanted James Blount, another important figure, to go over to Hawaii and investigate what happened before President Cleveland wanted to agree with annexing Hawaii. So, the pr 
present set James Blount over to Hawaii and this resulted in the Blount report which was which was investigation that stated of uh, that Blount found the American military and diplomats had overstepped. In the end, although they didn't give Queen Lili Uwakalani her power back, President Cleveland also didn't go ahead with annexing Hawaii after reading the report, but still wouldn't stop Hawaii from becoming a U.S. territory. In 1898, or from Sanford Dole declaring Hawaii a republic in 1894. And he, San, Dole would go on to name himself President of the Republic of Hawaii, a title that he held until 1898. And in response to the Blount reports, uh, the Senate had the commissioned a new investigation into the occupation of Hawaii, which found that uh, was actually, it pretty much disagreed with everything that was found in the Blount report. And it was used to discredit Blount's report and uh, basically found that everyone except the queen was in the right and also said that the U.S. troops did not have any impact on the occupation of Hawaii. And this report was released in 1894 and the Blount report was released in 1893. Then back in Hawaii, after the takeover led by Dole and the findings of the Blount and Morgan reports had been released, a group of the Hawaiian, a group of Hawaiian people who are still loyal to the Queen, even though she didn't have any power, tried to p fight back in 1895, which resulted in a failed insurrection and ultimately led to the Queen being arrested, charged, and put under house arrest. During her house arrest, she was forced to renounce her position as Queen. Some of these rebellions were led by Robert Wilcox, and he led rebellions, uh, and him, him and his group led rebellions starting as far back as 1888 in retaliation for the Bayonet, Bayonet Constitution, and they continued to fight until 1895. And these rebellions were called the Wilcox Rebellions, named after the man who led them, Robert Wilcox. By 1896, the Hawaiian monarchy had been dissolved, and in 1898, Hawaii would be annexed, which means that a territory adds another territory to theirs. In this case, the United States added Hawaii to their territory. So they kind of just absorbed them and eventually is now what we know today. Now we'll dive into some of the reasons why the occupation and annexation happened from political and military issues to sugar plantations. Even though the occupation was illegal, there was a group in Hawaii that supported American interests. Starting in the early 1800s, when missionaries first started traveling to Hawaii, a result of their influence was that some of the upper class foreigners who lived in Hawaii supported the occupation and wanted Hawaii to be annexed because it was in favor of their business and political ideals. This is how the Committee of Safety was formed. This is also very similar to Sanford, Sanford Dole's situation, 
who, while born in Hawaii, came from missionary parent, parents. He was wealthy, had a well-paying job, and his pos position and knowledge allowed him to push for things in favor of the United States, which led, which he did because it, it benefited him. And another push to annex Hawaii came during the Spanish-American War. Spanish-American War started in 1898, and because America decided it would benefit their military, that was reason enough for the okay to pass through government to go ahead, to go ahead with annexing Hawaii. Uh, the naval base created for the Spanish-American War would go on to be a significant place during World War II. The occupation and annexation of Hawaii also shows us a glimpse of how American foreign policy was shaped. Like how all it took was for economical and political interests to align for the U.S. to decide to illegally occupy Hawaii. And it shows what kind of effects occupation can have on a country's culture. In 1898, the annexation of the Philippines also showcased what American foreign policy was like and how it closely resembled what Hawaii went through especially with some of the Philippine struggles, including immigration and labor. Moving on, Hawaii faced many effects throughout the occupation and annexation, some of which they're still struggling with today. After the annexation, American businesses and trade in Hawaii boosted the economy, which prompted an influx of foreigners to move into Hawaii. And soon, Hawaiians started to lose their land to settlers, And this still uh, creates problems in Hawaii to this day. And along with the economy being boosted, prices also went up in Hawaii, which, which the Native Hawaiians struggled with being able to pay for their way of life. And after the annexation, this all happened and it became a problem. And along with the economy and the prices, the that only got worse as time went on. Hawaii also lost its independence. And as a result, the Hawaiian people lost large parts of their culture. For instance, Hawaiians were forced to stop speaking their native language in 1896, an English-only law was put into effect in Hawaiian public schools, and they were Hawaiians were forced to stop speaking their native language. And eventually, over the generations, the number of Hawaiians who could speak their native language would dwindle until it almost went extinct. And luckily, around the 1980s, efforts were put in place to keep the language alive. Like, uh, for example, they started offering schools that only taught in their native language or a mix of English and their native language. And they also started with kids at a young age, so they'd be able to grow up knowing their native language. The U.S. also exploited Hawaii's natural resources, such as sugar, pineapple, and whale oil. And after these resources were all used up or uh, improvements had been made to where they weren't needed as much, tourism became the, one of the biggest profit, profits of Hawaii in the economy. Now moving onwards from 1898, we are reaching the end of the five-year timeline and so by 1898 Hawaii had undergone an occupation by the U.S. which resulted in their monarchy being dissolved and they were officially made into a U.S. territory. 
And here I'm going to go a little bit past our timeline to briefly show how the Hawaii, how the how Hawaii has still been fighting much past just this small time period. And that in August of 1959, you Hawaii officially won the fight to become the 50, 50th state of America. Being a state means that it had its own political establishment, which comes with more rights and representation, and, while well, territory is under federal control. Hawaii had to fight for so long, largely due to racism, discrimination, and other setbacks, which shows how long the ramifications of Hawaii being annexed have lasted. Although there have been many improvements, there have been also many, there have been so many wrongdoings committed against Hawaii that bleeds through my short timeline of five years and shows that Hawaii is still fighting.